Um, good evening and welcome to the first of three parents talks organized by um, Alumni Engagement and the Adva Adva Advancement Office. My name is Nosimilo Kumalo and I'm the Alumni Engagement Officer and it is an honor for us to welcome you to the first um, event speaking to the International Baccalaureate Program, the IB. Um, Thank you so much for attending and I hope that this event will be very insightful for you. A couple of technical um, things from me. Firstly, please mute yourself as you enter. Um, that will help us um, make sure that we can hear everybody, especially those answering the questions. Um, this event will be recorded, so please be aware of that. That is to ensure that the people who cannot attend this, this event because of work commitments and time differences can access it afterwards. Um, there will be a question and answer session at the end. If you have any questions as the panelists are answering some of the questions provided, please type them in the chat box. If you wanna wait until the end, we will open it up at the end so that you can ask some questions. Um, that's it from me. Um, and I hope this is a good evening for everyone. I will now hand over to Yael who will be the moderator this evening. Um, and is a parent at WK as well. Over to you, Yaya. Thank you very much, Nosimilo, and good evening, everybody. This is quite impressive. I'm so happy there's 54 people here and we're still counting. Um, it means that I wasn't the only one who didn't know what baccalaureate means and what IB means. And we all have all these questions. Personally, I finished IB last year. <laughs> My son Or is uh, going, he finished last year, and then I'll be joining IB again next year and again in about five years. So I think I'm going to have a, quite a mileage with IB. When two years ago, three years ago, IB, I didn't even know what IB means, and I didn't even know that bac what baccalaureate means. And by the way, it just means a degree, a bachelor degree, if you didn't know. There's a lot of things that are not sure about IB, and I want to share that screen quickly, which we prepared this afternoon. I'm not going to read it through to you. I'm just going to show you. We're going to share it just now. IB is a lot of abbreviation, a lot of things to know, and sometimes it just the kids just know, and we stay like numb, and we don't understand, and it's frightening. It's a very, very rigorous, like hard academic uh, program and our kids gonna battle and our kids find walls and we'll be, have, we'll be the people who bring them the leather to climb up that wall or the blanket to warm them up or comfort them or tell them it's okay, you know, life is not that bad and things like this. So we thought as parents that maybe we should have, make it easy for other people who haven't had the chance to be an IB parent before um, just a few questions that we thought might be interesting, and we're going to discuss them this evening. This is some of the abbreviation and the thing that we're going to, your kids, the language your kids going to speak in the next, in the next uh, few years. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now because I'm going to share that document in the chat, and later on school we share it with you. Well, I can't claim to know everything about IB, so I brought we brought in a few special people to us. Liz Kamajan is the IB coordinator. Uh, she is the person you're going to call and speak to, and she knows everything about IB. You will congratulate her, you'll be upset with her, you'll ask her to explain to you, and you'll end up very good friends of Liz. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, Wendy Green Thompson finished IB two years ago with Josh, and she's currently an IB2 mom. Billy Gray finished IB last year. We graduated together, and she's heading towards IB um, in the next year or two. I'm not sure where's Kathleen. And with her, we have Candy, who finished IB last year. So we have a bit of parents' perception, a professional percep perception, and students. I want to go straight in there. The biggest question we have, the first one is, what does IB means and why is it different from 4.5? 5? 
So just so you know, Form 5 is belong to the IGCSC, which is the Cambridge High School Diploma. This is the last year of the diploma. The IGCC is the name of the international education, something, something, something. And that's the end of high school at Waterford. IB is a different diploma, which is a pre-university diploma. It's not the same, but it's parallel to the matrix or the A-levels, which we discussed just now. Um, it's just a diploma that helps you go into universities and beside that, there's a lot of other adventures as we'll speak about them very soon. Candy, what's the difference between IB and Form 5? Is there a difference? Uh, from a student, uh, hi everyone, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, from a student's perspective, uh, Form 5 and IB, uh, coursework wise, um, ability wise, it is very much different. Uh, I had to reorganize a lot uh, better than I did in Form 5. It's a lot more rigorous in terms of workload, uh, as well as depending on your individual students. Uh, it also depends on your subjects and which ones you choose. Uh, I had a very interesting shift over from Form 5 into IV as I switched quite a number of my subjects. Uh, <laughs> I switched from art uh, and I landed up doing anthropology instead. Uh, I dropped one of my sciences and I did a completely different science. Uh, so for me, it was a very much a different experience, both mentally uh, as well as uh, ability. So yeah, Form 5 is was more like a preparation level and IB was like jumping from that level to almost level 5. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> well okay. that's, what it felt, that's what it felt like for me in Term 1. Uh, by Term 2 and Term 3 of my first year, it was a lot more manageable. Uh, I was very really lucky. I had uh, my parents to help me. Uh, I was a day student. So I had my parents constantly with me, uh, which was a huge bonus. Uh, whereas in Form 5, I was a boarder. So there's also those uh, sorts of things to take into account, especially if your child is going from being a day student to being a boarder, which I know a number <laughs> of students do. Uh, yeah. I think that pretty much covers it for me. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So what, what is A-level? What is IB? What's AS? Why A, A, you know, what is the difference? So we've asked Liz to explain it to us, please. Thank you so much. And thank you very much to those who invited me to be here this evening, as well as all of those who, who have come to listen to this. Um, I'm Elizabeth Coverage and I am the, the IB Diploma Coordinator um, at Waterford. And so in very broad terms, there are similarities between A-level education and the IB Diploma Program. They are both pre-university courses that last over a period of two years. And AS levels are the first year of the A-level program. So where AS levels have are done in a single Have we lost these or have I lost everyone? Hello? Yeah. We're back. All right, sorry about that. Um, so both the IBDP and the A-level programs are two-year pre-university um, qualifications that allow entrance into university. Most students who pursue A-levels do three subjects, occasionally four, and they can choose from any of the subjects on offer by Cambridge A-levels. The IB is considerably more structured in that students do a broader range of subjects. They do six subjects, and they must pick subjects from specific subject groups. So for a student who knows at the end of their high school career exactly what path they want to take, A-levels may be well suited to them. They do a greater depth of study in a narrower range of subjects, um, and it is considerably more focused. The IB Diploma Program asks that students do a wider range of subjects. So 
arguably their subjects are done in less depth, but there is a greater breadth of learning that is accomplished through the IB diploma program. And additionally, the IB also embeds at sort of the center of what we do, research skills, theory of knowledge, um, so critical thinking, as well as a commitment to creativity, activity, and service. So it is a broader um, program and one that I believe really prepares students for work at university or other tertiary institutions they may want to um, pursue after they're finished with us. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, if you haven't been an IB parent yet, you're probably sitting there and scratching your head. Billy, what did you know about IB before you, sorry, Wendy. Wendy, what did you know about IB before your boy started IB? Good evening, everybody. Well, I think I was a bit fortunate that I had my, my son start in form one. So I was a link parent to some of the IB students and knew some of it. I knew the acronyms, I knew these deadlines, I knew these IAs and E squares and lots of stress. But nothing could have prepared me for my own son going through IB. So even though you have all this background knowledge from having supported other kids, when it comes to your own child, I think it's, it's very different. What I did know is that it's a very good pre-qualification um, for universities, that it's a rigorous academic program and has a good strong CAS program and that there's lots of stress involved. So having put through two children through the IB, the second one now in IB2, oh, excuse me. There am I, I lost everybody there. So, now I know a little bit more, I can share a bit more uh, and we'll be discussing this later in the series. Thanks, Yael. Billy, what was your experience before coming into IB? Uh, Candy was also uh, started at Form 1 in Waterford. Um, and Candy is a volunteer. So uh, we were not link parents. I'm a tour guide, so I was away a lot. Um, and Kev was at home with the girls quite a lot on his own. Um, but yeah, a lot of stress, a lot of work, um, and very important, actually, from Form 1 already, I know that most of you are IB1 parents now, but that the kids learn to manage their workloads. Um, IB1 and IB2, tremendous amount of work. And if they don't stay on top of it, it becomes extremely overwhelming, um, which adds to just the stress at home um, and obviously for the student. So- um, And before Ivy, what did you know of it? Uh, not too much, um, yeah. Uh, and, and if you didn't know much, why did you choose your daughters to do IB? Like why, why did you do that? Okay, for me, it was not just, uh, IB itself, for me, the whole fact that, that uh, especially in IB, there's over 50, 60, 70 nationalities. Um, so very many different cultures, very diverse cultures, very different people. And for me, that was really, really important um, for the girls to, to learn uh, tolerance, compassion, and, and just uh, be open that the world outside is big, broad, and one, know, one needs to, to learn to live and to work with all those different cultures. And um, I think Candy having been at Ivy and Caitlin has done from form one to form five, um, the girls have got such a broader um, outlook on, on the world. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I can add that I think for me, I'd be just the opportunity that it opens once you finish 
it's basically every university will accept you with an IB. It doesn't matter what you want to do. If you don't know what to do, there'll be university that will take you even if you don't know what you want to do. If you know what you want to do, you might even have credits and things that you can write off because you've done the IB. And I think it's a challenge um, that you put your child through that builds the character of that student, of the personality, the change is enormous. Uh, I think you really find out who your child is uh, once they finish IB. And I'm sure we're all very proud of the products and <laughs> what comes out. Thanks, Billy. Liz, I wanted to ask you, um, and I'll share the thing so it will help you. The subject that we that the students gonna go through in IB, here it is, um, just shared it. Could you would like to say a few words about that, please? Yes, thank you so much. So all IB diploma candidates do six subjects, um, and those six subjects are chosen from predetermined subject groups. All students must take one subject from the first five groups, and then their sixth subject can either be doubling up on one of the first five, or it can come from group six. So all students at Waterford take English as a taught language. Most do so as a group one language or a first language, um, a language in which they are proficient and they study it as a literature subject or as a language and literature subject. Within group one, we also offer Siswati. Um, so Siswati literature is offered to students for whom that is a proficient mother tongue language. And we offer a school supported literature program for students who wish to pursue their own mother tongue as a first language, where we're able to facilitate the teaching of literature skills and we support the students though they're not receiving instruction in their own language. All students do two languages. Most do English as a group one language and then take a group two or language acquisition course. And at Waterford, we offer the options of doing either French as a language acquisition or Spanish. And we offer those at different levels. Students who have done French or Spanish in high school as an acquisition language are very much encouraged to continue to build those skills. Students who come to us with no existing acquisition language are then offered the opportunity to start either French or Spanish from scratch and learn over two years conversational um, and as well as, as comprehension skills in those languages. So all IB students do a minimum of two languages, one as a first language, and then the other either as a second first language or a language acquisition subject. We do offer to students who arrive at Waterford with very limited English to study their first mother language as their group one subject and to do English as an acquisition language. Um, so we do cater to students from multiple linguistic backgrounds, but all IB students do at least two languages. All IB students also do a group three subject, which are our individuals and societies. And at Waterford, that, that is a large offering. We offer seven group three subjects business management, economics, history, geography, psychology, social and cultural anthropology, as well as global politics. All students choose at least one of those. Some students choose two of them. We also expect that all students will do one of the experimental sciences. And at Waterford, we offer, um, we offer, sorry, uh, biology, chemistry, physics, as well as environmental studies um, uh, systems and societies. Environmental systems and societies is an interdisciplinary subject that can be taken both as a group four experimental science and as a group three individuals and societies um, subject. And so we have students who choose it across those two subject groups. All students do maths. 
Um, and I know that there are students who arrive at that stage in their careers really hoping that math is something they can let go of. The diploma does require that all of our students take math at some level. We also offer three of the arts subjects at Waterford. We offer uh, visual arts, we offer theater, and we offer music. So for students who either have a background, an academic background in those subjects, or a strong drive to develop academic skills in those art subjects, they are offered the opportunity to do so. All students additionally must take theory of knowledge. Um, all students will write an extended research piece and all of our students are expected to involve themselves in elements that express creativity, activity, and very central to Waterford's ethos is our community service program. And those are part of the diploma. They are not additional demands that we ask. They really are central to the diploma and requirements in order to be able to, to, to graduate with a diploma at the end of two years. Thanks, Liz. I think really the CAS, the opportunity to be involved, to learn to lead, because the IB, by the way, IB ones usually leading a lot of the clubs at school. Um, your child can get an opportunity to suddenly be a leader of a cause, could be um, gender cause, could be Africa Week, Asia Week, America Week, a lot of other things that happens at school led by IB1. And it's a great opportunity to show this ability, but also the, just the involvement uh, in community and in what's going around makes a makes it very interesting. Liz, what happened if a, a child didn't do very well in the last two years because of COVID, because of online, maybe one subject is not great, can they still push it into IB or in the other, another like maybe goes with it if we've never done anything, like never done business, for example, somebody who took, can they now start business? Can they like start afresh or they have to continue the phone? I, I think that that is, there is no one single answer to that. Um, and I think it depends very much on the individual student as well as the subject. With the group three subjects, with individuals and societies, business management, psychology, social and cultural anthropology, for many students, this is the first time they've ever seen those subjects offered. And so we do not assume any prior knowledge. The, I, I'm in addition to the, the coordinator, I also am the global politics teacher. I assume everyone at the beginning of first year is starting basically from zero. So with group three subjects, it is not necessary to have done them before. And if they have been done before, it's not necessarily that they were done exceptionally well. There's an opportunity to start fresh. With mathematics, it is important that some of those foundational skills are in place. So a student wanting to pursue the pure maths option at higher level really benefits from and, and arguably needs strong foundational math skills. To pick up higher level physics at IB level without having done physics before, it, it is if not impossible, it would, it would create an undue amount of stress on the student. Um, it's something that we would discourage because those foundations are not in place. So depending on the subject group, as well as the, the, the intrinsic drive of each individual student, um, the answer is, unfortunately, it depends. But my pitch to all IB ones during orientation is that the two-year program will be much, much easier if they enjoy what they are doing. And so working to support each student to be taking the subjects they want to do, I think is incredibly important and supersedes have they done it before. I definitely highly recommend it. It's so stress as it is like, don't put more stress on the students with things that, you know, tackle things that they not necessarily capable of. Parents, Wendy, Billy, 
what's the benefit of IB education? What did you find that works well with your kids? Who wants to start? Wendy, would you like to start? Okay. So I think um, besides being just an academic program, it offers more than, I'm not sure what other schools offer because I haven't been with them. <coughs> excuse me. But it offers a more rigorous program. Oh, excuse me, Bali, can you carry on? Hey, um, um, uh, and to you, Bailey. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, thanks, Wendy. Okay, so Candy has always been relatively uh, focused on uh, what she wants to do. Uh, she, her passion is photography and uh, journalism, which is the direction she's going in. So um, she did anthropology as a subject uh, from group three, and she did history from group three. So she did not take a subject from group six. Um, it meant for Candy a tremendous amount of reading. Um, she's a good reader anyway, but she really had to, her holidays were spent, uh, she came on holiday uh, in IB1 with <laughs> six anthropology books. So uh, she did push through and I don't know how much of each book she read, but she did work her way through it. So um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, um, Candy did uh, maths, uh, accelerated maths until form four, form five. form five. She did accelerated maths, but then actually dropped her maths to a sort of standard uh, standard level, standard level in IB um, because maths was not a main focus for where she wants to go. Um, so I think also the thing is, as a parent, is listen, listen to your children, listen to what they want to do and guide them. Um, we, we are inclined to push our ideals and uh, ambitions onto our children. And um, we want them to be happy in the line that they wanna go. So um, when your child listen when they talk, um, that has been quite a thing for, that, for Kevin and I to learn is to actually listen what they, where they want to go, uh, what fields they want to, some kids, Candy was always very uh, focused in her direction. Our second one was much more dithery. So um, we're very happy with Candy's subject choice. It meant a lot of work for her, but um, it's paid off. Benefits of IB. Benefits <laughs> of IB, well, uh, the opportunity to get into an overseas university, that was our goal. Um, we are South Africans, I'll be quite honest with you. We did not, we didn't want our girls to go to a South African university. Um, I just think the benefits of an international education is just that much broader. So um, yes, Candy's been accepted to a university in America. Um, very exciting for all of us, neither Kevin nor I have done university. So a huge learning curve for, for, for all three of us um, and very exciting, very exciting for the kids, huge opportunities for them. Um, and the hard work's paid off for Candy, the effort, the blood, the sweat, the tears and the, the nagging from the parents. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I think to add on benefits, I think, first of all, as I mentioned before, it's really opening doors. I mean, it gives you more options than the A-levels and the matrix will do in the world, whether it's in Johannesburg or in Maine, uh, USA. I also think it's really helpful building the personality of the students. It takes them through challenges that they haven't been before. And, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger and makes them more resilient which probably will help them a lot when they go away from home into university. At least we know they can manage their academics uh, and leave them to deal with the rest. Um, we mustn't forget that the IB, especially at UWC high schools, gives you that opportunity to work in, to study in the States with great, I mean, obviously you can study everywhere, but if you choose to study in the USA, uh, the scholarships are very generous. Um, 
a lot of the people pushing through IB because of that, but I think as parents, we really have to take account of the UWC, of the principles of UWC, of the goals of UWC, of the people that UWC would like to see in the world, uh, carrying leaders, uh, very involved human beings. So I hope that we all want, you know, um, we all want to think about university and opportunities, but let's don't forget that before we reach the apex, or we reach the top of the mountain, there's a journey, and these two years is a journey, um, which is guided by the UWC principles, and it's worth a while just going to UWC website and read those principles if you're not very familiar with them, and see if those values are in line with your family values. It's interesting to Gail? see. And also, Gail? yes? Okay, I'm back. Wendy? I'm happy. <laughs> benefits, <laughs> Wendy? Not so much experience. We're looking at benefits. Do you have anything to add on benefits? So I think for me, um, so I was my son was never was never interested in going to university in in the States. But what it does do is it's a better preparation for university. I think the skills, the research skills that they learn for their IAs and for their E squares really sets them apart for tertiary education, because they learn these from IB1. So they are learning life skills that I don't think are ordinarily taught in other post-matric uh, levels as compared to the IB. They're taught to be independent-minded and to have independent thought. I think our students challenge the status quo respectfully, um, and they are allowed to do so at, at WK. I think they also, through the CAS programs, they learn to interact with communities in which they live so they can identify injustices uh, in the world. And as Billy was saying, listen to your children. I think that we, our kids have different experiences. I've had two kids go through IB and their experiences have been completely different. Listen always, what it teaches them is a respect for other cultures and, and other languages, just because we've got such a vast community of, of students from all over the world. And also our teaching body is so, is so varied. So for me, that, that, was, that was very important. I also think that um, the Waterford IB a group that supports the, our kids through IB. So the academic head, the IB coordinator, the heads of the different courses are very good. So they track your child throughout their IB years, so IB1 and IB2. They can tell when a child is in trouble. Uh, they provide the necessary support that is required to get them over the hurdles. There's counseling services that are also provided because they are at different levels in the IB, there's different challenges and different experiences your child will have. So I, for me, um, I want to the IB education because it really sets your child apart from, from, from other kids, I think, that, that have gone through other processes, maybe A-levels or AS-levels or a matric uh, that we have in South Africa. So not just, for me, it wasn't about going to the US. It was having a, a rigorous program that will actually stand, stand, make my child stand in good stead for going to any tertiary university, really. Thanks, Yale. Thank you. This is lead me to a quick uh, question, just a quick answer. Um, I be definitely open your doors in all universities, even if you're going to South Africa, to universities that know metrics, then you, there is a, bit, a little bit of a process where you they um, convert the IB results into the um, matrix results. Um, I don't think there'll be any university who says, no, you've done IB, don't come in. This question came up with one of the you've parents who registered. Am I back? Okay, so I think Liz, Liz, I think if you don't have anything to add on that, I think this is really, I don't think your child will have a problem uh, registered to any university in the world with IB. And I must admit that IB from UWC gives them a little bit extra, um, um, I won't credit, but at least attention. Um, 
What about limitation? What are the limitation of IB? Do you guys saw any limitation? Liz, do you know any limitations or can you point out anything? So Billy I, and Wendy think about it, we'll come to you just now. Certainly. So um, I think perhaps rather than, than calling it a limitation of the program, I, I do want to say quite clearly that the IB diploma program is not for everybody. Um, it is not for students who know exactly what they want to do and want to focus their attention on those things um, quite specifically. Those students may well be better served by pursuing A-levels or another more focused um, post-secondary qualification. The IB is, it is rigorous. Um, and its rigor is what allows it to be as well respected as it is. Um, the fact that an IB diploma, all IB diplomas, regardless of sort of the number of total points ultimately achieved, all students who achieve the IB diploma have doors open. They are welcomed into universities globally. And because of that, it is difficult. It demands a high level of, of self-motivation from students um, and independent work, independent research is very much part of, of the program and how it is designed. Um, so there will be students for whom the IB is not the best choice. Um, it is not the only qualification available and it's not necessarily the best qualification for individual students. And I think that being sort of realistic about what your, your, your students' expectations are, um, what your child or, or um, what their expectations and desires are, as well as their own abilities and limitations, um, it, it, it helps to ensure that the IB diploma program is the right fit. Um, because as I say, it's not going to be the right fit for all students um, simply because of, of the nature of the program. And I don't know if, if past IB parents would have anything then to add to that. Be, before I go to the parents, I want to say that this is the first talk of three talks and the second one, either the second one or the third one, we're still <laughs> negotiating, will be about other options beside IB. We're going to go very much in depth of what's available for my child if he's not going to do IB. So keep that, if you have questions about that, let's not discuss them today. Let's assume today you are still looking into IB. Um, we definitely going to look into what else beside IB in one of the other two talks that we're going to have. Billy, anything to add about limitation? Um, yeah, well, just that, just that your, your, depending on what your child wants to do, or your, 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 your son or daughter, um, and the, like Liz said, um, my, our youngest wants to do marine biology and the Waterford, unfortunately, the Waterford IBE program does not suit what she wants to do. So we have to look at alternatives. Um, but uh, there's a very broad spectrum of subject choices. So, um, yeah, you know, use, use uh, the parents must use the, the, the staff, um, people like Liz, uh, Mr. Stora, they're there on campus for the kids, the students to go and see, to speak to. Um, those people are there for the kids. So use them. Uh, and I mean that in the best possible manner is speak to them, ask the questions um, and get the answers. Yeah. Um, yes, Candy. May I add on from a student's perspective? Um, uh, I did find uh, uh, IB can be, uh, ironically, it's limiting in the fact that it's so broad, uh, like the groups uh, and the way that they group the subjects. Uh, like my mom said, I chose to do two group three subjects, uh, but I had to drop my arts in order to do uh, those two. Uh, I would have loved to have done art uh, in IB, but I could only choose six. And I did attempt in the very beginning of my IB one year to do seven subjects. Uh, for me, it was not possible. 
uh, it put a lot of mental strain on myself uh, and I made the decision to not do art. Uh, so that was possibly the only limitation I found uh, from a student's perspective. And I had a long talk with Mr. Stora about it and about what I wanted to do. Um, and I spoke with my parents about it as well. So if your child does struggle with something like that, uh, listen to them <laughs> is the only uh, sort of advice that I can give from a, from a student. I had a lot of support and it was it allowed me to make that sort of decision when it came to the limitations uh, of Ivy. And that was, from a student's perspective, that was the only one that I really saw doing the IB diploma program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think one limitation, it's not so much of the IB uh, as much as the parents that we need to consider. IB is not coming for free. Um, a lot of people, it does come for free. Uh, I think maybe, I'm, I'm not sure how many of the IB students are direct payers like me, like Wendy, like Billy. Um, our kids were not supported uh, by, uh, we are direct payers. So it's something that you really need to consider as well, the cost of IB. And especially if you wanna go into a um, hostel, because that makes everything about 60, 80,000 80, rand more expensive. So yeah, you do as a parent need to look into that and hopefully um, you can manage it because it's worth the while. Um, I'm not here to say there is a place to talk and whatever, but I'm sure you can always talk and see if anything can be done um, with the stuff. But yeah, you do need to figure uh, the financial strain of IB. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite strenuous. It can Just be- to add uh, as well, yeah. Coffees, it was quite a mission. Yeah, go for it. With regards to the, to the cost. So the cost for the academia and hostel are one cost, then you have the cost of the textbooks and you have the cost of actually writing the IB exam because it's an external exam. Uh, so when you're thinking of taking your child to IB, it, it is an expensive course. Yeah, and the information is available at school. So you can obviously speak to the professor and find out exactly, even if you're at form two or form three right now, you can have an idea of the difference between IB and the forms and then can make an informed decision about it and not get a heart attack later on. What I have been, uh, I have witnessed though, um, which has been amazing is that some of the IB graduates have been educated by a village people in the family or extended family pooling money together to get their child through the IB program. And that has been amazing to see. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, what do we as parents, now let's go to tips because just now we're gonna go and look through the, the questions. Um, but for the last thing, some tips or what us as parents, um, what can we do to help the students? So how do we need to prepare ourselves besides going to our bank statements? Um, ladies, do you want to start? I have some points. Okay. I'm happy to start. I hmm? just, I think, I think you have to realize that it is a rigorous program. The volume of work is very high. And the constant juggling and meeting of deadlines is, is actually very stressful. So you have to, depending on whether your child lives with you or your child lives in the hostel, you have to be in constant contact with your child because they are stressed, they are stressed. Uh, and sometimes it's a fine line um, between teaching them resilience and pushing them over the edge. And you will know uh, as a parent. So the tips are stay in constant communication with your child. The, the aim of the IB program is to make kids independent of their parents and to be self-reliant and self-manage. But sometimes I find, that, and, and, and that's, that's fine on paper, but I think we live in the real world and real things happen. So some advice would be for me as a parent is know when those IAs are due, know when the E squares are due, because sometimes you find out 
after the IA was due that it was due when the stress levels are high and you can't manage it and the school doesn't share this information with you. So you have to have a very close relationship and close management, not be a helicopter parent, but be a supportive parent so that you know all the checks and balances that they that they need to, to do and what they need to go through. Also, mental health gets affected during this time. Watch your child's behavior. Do they start behaving strangely? Do they start sleeping too much? A lot of eating disorders creep in in, in IV. So yeah, for me, those would be those would be some of the tips, just practical tips that you can observe and just stay engaged all the time. Thank you, Gwendy. Billy? Okay, um, I must say that I was very lucky. Candy's very organized. Um, I was away a lot with Candy for IB1, but because of COVID, I was at home for IB2. Um, Candy made a, a lot of use of the school's counseling system in IB1, maybe because I was away a lot, but um, also to have a neutral party to talk to. Um, so don't be shy to, to suggest uh, going or making use of the school's counseling uh, personnel, uh, for the want of a better word. Um, they're there to help your child on this journey. Um, we as parents, we don't have all the answers. Uh, I'll be quite honest with you. And um, if there is a trigger, the counselors are trained to pick up those triggers if you as a parent don't pick them up yourself. And they are there to help the students and you as a parent on this journey. Um, like Wendy said, it's rigorous. There is a lot of additional stress at home. Um, Candy was at home for IB for she was a day scholar, um, but she coped. Um, and I think it was due to uh, Lila and also just the great staff at Waterford. Um, they, they are there for your kids. Um, the tutor groups, um, your, the, your child's tutor is there for your child. It's your first, it's your child's first, um, the first door. I, I don't know how else to say it, but um, if they can't speak to you, the tutor is the next person to speak to. So um, especially for students to come in um, at IB level who haven't gone through the Waterfords form one to form five, where a tutor is a huge part of your child's life, day, uh, weekly life. Um, the tutors are there to, to, to answer questions that they might not feel comfortable asking you or just um, to have also just a neutral party um, and an and emotionally involved person. Um, so yeah. Thank you very much. Um, there's one thing I wanted to add. The thing is, all of us are Waterford uh, parents, so we kind of know what UWC is. Um, a lot of the links that coming, expecting UWC college, we're going to sit on the lawn and we'll debate world peace and we'll save this and we'll save that. And then they hit IB, boom. And IB is a, <laughs> is a, it's a big strain. And also our students, although Form 5 is quite strenuous, um, but still IB, it's much more than anybody else expected before. So there's this this thing of uh, suddenly there's a um, discrimin um, what is it called? I can't remember the name. But anyway, uh, some of the people that you'll see coming, friends of your children might complain that it's not what they expected. Be ready for IB, it's a challenge. It's not a walk in the park. Um, know the deadlines, please do know the deadlines. We as family missed, for example, the application to Canada, um, um because canada is not under uh, shelby davis so you had to come in july you know or just forgot about it we didn't know there is a deadline to apply for canada a uh, scholarship and we missed that so please do know and i think one once you're in ib i'm not sure if it's ib1 or IB, i think in ib1 john story gives you a book this is a bible do read it if you decided to do ib and you took that as a parent you took that commitment do read john story's bible and write down everything that you need to remember and help the students follow up 
Um, make yourself familiar with signs of stress, please do. And, and, and try and see if something goes wrong with your child, especially if you're not, if it's a hostel. By hostel, we opt for a hostel on IB1 from the idea that let or uh, know the other students, get to know the peers, get to know everybody because they all come from international. It's not all of them from form five and be more familiar. And then we thought IB2 better come home because now the stretch starts and you need to study, but then COVID came, so he was home anyway. But I think if you can afford form one hostel, I think it's, it's wise do make use of the stuff they are there for us as well don't be shy ask uh, raise a flag or don't raise a flag or just as, as everything goes well um yeah i just trying to think what else i wrote down um i think that's about it and i think that's about it from us yeah um, I, I just want to say yes that the school days in ib are much longer so mm -hmm. It's they, they come home or finish school at five o'clock. The days are physically and emotionally draining and IB can become all consuming. So when they do come home, allow them to rest. As Yael was saying, you're the security blanket, you know, allow them to sleep, uh, especially if they're in the hostel and you're a parent that's far away. So just provide that extra comfort they need because the program is the school day is long and it's physically and emotionally draining. Mm -hmm. I just want to say to the parents who join us later, if you scroll up in the chat about 6 p.m., 10 minutes past 6, I sent a PDF with all acronyms, what is IA, what is this, what is that, uh, it's made by OR, um, we will make it available at school somehow, but also right now you can actually download the file and that will answer most of the questions. I think this is bring us to the end of the prepared questions. Um, I know I saw Liz busy replying to a lot of the questions that came through. Uh, we can scroll down quickly. Liz, is there anything that you saw that we haven't answered or there's some open messages? I, I lost I mean, track open of questions with so I'm not sure. Um, okay, what we can do is we'll, because this thing is recorded, the, the talk is recorded, we're going to uh, also look at those questions and maybe answer and come up with the Q and F for IB. Um, I'm just going to go quickly. Giving the stress, what is the adventures does it bring rather than university for five? So we explained again. If your child wants to have more opportunities or he doesn't know exactly, choose the IB. Otherwise, if they know what they want, go straight from four five. Uh, the Form 5, the, what if uh, the IGCSE diploma opens doors in Swaziland and some may university in, the, in Europe, not so much in South Africa, but we're going to talk about it in our next talk, um, what else we can do beside IB. Um, what else, what else, what else, offer computer science, that's a good question, I really want to ask that question as well, Will, what if we offer computer science, are we going to, do you want to answer that, because I really want to answer for that. Um, so we, we are continually evaluating the subject offerings that we have, um, and looking at ways that we are able to expand those offerings. And there is certainly space for expansion within um, the group for sciences. It is an ongoing conversation, um, so I cannot say that it won't ever happen. I hope that it does. I can categorically say that it will not be on offer in 2022. Um, the implementation of new syllabi not only requires the hiring and training of new staff, but it is also a lengthy sort of process that we go through with the International Baccalaureate Organization. Um, so it's not simply a matter of we would really like to offer this and we have a teacher who can teach it. There is actually a process involved in integrating those new subjects. And so it is a process that, that unfortunately takes um, time. And, and by time, I mean years. 
Uh, Liz, I remember years ago, uh, before you became Ivy, before even, I think when Helene was, there was kind of a question, there was a survey or something from like deciding on the syllabus. Is it something that happened every certain number of years or was it just something Helene decided to do? No, so the IB Diploma Evaluation is uh, both a service offered by the International Baccalaureate Organization and also a requirement um, from schools to ensure that they are implementing properly. It's done every five years and we are just about to launch the start of the 2021 evaluation. So it is um, a process that we are actually will be announcing in this coming week's newsletter, but it is something that happens regularly to ensure that all IB World schools are fully compliant with the standards and practices, but also the overarching ideology um, of the IBO. Excellent. Um, uh, Mekadim asks, do students go to IB smoothly and they go from full form to form five or is there an entrance kind of exam? What are the criteria and process to go to IB? Do you, would you like, Liz, can you, do, can you answer quickly, please? Certainly. The transition from form four to form five is as smooth as it is because it's a single program. So both form four and five are the two years of the IGCSE syllabus. Um, so the transition happens quite smoothly because in many ways, it's the same program spread over two years. There is a difference between Form 5 and IB1, and I think Cami was able to articulate that really nicely um, at the beginning. We do everything that we can at Waterford to ensure that students who finish their IGCSE program and wish to continue with us are able to do so if that is what is in their best interests, there is an application process. Um, so students currently, um, our current um, Form 5 class have submitted their IB applications. Um, that happened about a week ago. There is an evaluation process that is done in consultation with individual teachers, with tutors, so that we have a holistic sort of understanding of of the likely success of students if they come through to the IB program. They're not expected to write additional entrance exams, but there is an application process in much the same way that new students coming in to IB, external students will go through an application process. I, I wanted to add to that, um, to many of our parents, the idea of having maybe free studies in America is very tempting. Um, but please, please, please do not force your child if it doesn't want the decision to go to IB has to be your child's decision. You cannot be blamed for that because the stress that this child's going to go, the fights that you're going to have because you said I should do it, and the teachers that actually ended up supporting someone who doesn't want to be there and wasting, not wasting, but giving energy in, or dividing the energy between those who want to be there and want to succeed to those who are forced to be there. And it's really strenuous to the system and to the child himself. So if your kids want to do IB, support them with your full heart. But if they don't want and you can't convince them kindly, don't force them to do it. Um, yeah, it doesn't worth it for the family and for the child. Um, another question is about can they switch classes? So I know there's a grace period at the beginning of the year, but I think after that, you maybe can drop, change the level, but not really much, isn't it, Liz? Yeah, so there is, um, we, we do a full academic orientation at the beginning of their first year, um, where they're exposed to all of the subjects we have on offer, they're given the opportunity um, to try out different subjects they're maybe not familiar with. And for the majority of the first term, we allow a fair amount of flexibility in terms of changing subjects. We do get to a certain point where the amount of material that has been covered becomes difficult to catch up. Um, and so after the, the first term of IB1, subject changes really are done on a case by case basis. Um, and once we get to, to sort of the, the midpoint of IB1, the changing of subject levels remains possible 
but changing of subjects is, is strongly discouraged except in exceptional circumstances. Thank you. Paula was asking what resource available to assist a student when they don't know what, they, what career to choose. Um, personally, with my son, I didn't, maybe he didn't ask. I didn't see any career guidance at school. So maybe it will be my question as well. Is the career guidance school? Because until now, or doesn't know what he wants to do, which means that the liberal arts is really good because there's another four years that you can go through without deciding what you want to do. But uh, actually, what's the career guidance? It's what if it's, <laughs> So I, I would say that there isn't explicit career guidance. There is university guidance. Um, and and in, in that service, Mr. Stora definitely has conversations with students about the best pathways to get to where they want to be. Um, and for students who have a very clear sense of direction, he is able to help with subject choices um, and also pointing them towards suitable tertiary opportunities. Many of our students go on to pursue a liberal arts education, which is a broad based um, education that allows them a further number of years beyond the IB to make some decisions. Um, I am a, I'm a Waterford IB alum myself, actually. And when I finished the IB program, I had no idea what I wanted to do. But the IB had provided me a wide enough base that when I went on to pursue my university studies in Canada, um, I, I had options. Um, and I was then able to sort of narrow my choices at university as I, as I became more comfortable and familiar with subjects that I, I knew I wanted to invest my time in. So I wouldn't say that there is explicit career guidance, but I think that all IB teachers and tutors and Mr. Stora through admissions and university guidance, all of us are invested in assisting our students as they move forward um, to life beyond the IB program. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Liz, we'll let you rest a little bit. Um, one of the questions was about the points. So we will discuss it, I think, in the question when we're talking about uh, going to the US and it's one of the so that the other um, um, work, um, talk will be about going to the US and doing university and stuff like that. But just as a brief, each subject in the IB gives you six points. So you have uh, seven subjects, that, sorry, seven points, which mean you have six subjects where you get, if you amazing, you get seven points for each. You practically below good somewhere there. It uh, gives you 45 points. And if you scored well in your theory of knowledge and in your extended essay, which you're going to write on one of the subjects you're studying, could be on math, on English, on French, whatever you choose, they, if you score well there, they give you another three points. So 45 is the maximum points that um, IB a diploma you can get. However, I think it's 24 is the passing. Um, point just do with your head you don't know yeah 24 means you pass and you get a diploma below that you get a certificate um what if it has a great history of getting people to universities with diploma or certificate and there's always an opportunity to rewrite um so you don't necessarily end up with uh, those points the average for last year was 32 um that was the average that people scored. Most of the people scored between 30 to 36, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think we had 45 last year, but we have had 45 before at Waterford. So this is about the points. Um, but Candy, there's a question for you. Are you with me? What's the disadvantages of schooling, of day schooling? Uh, Liana is asking. Uh, I did give a this, the yeah, <laughs> I did give a, a, a brief message on the group, but I can elaborate it now. Uh, <laughs> so um, I made the decision to come home uh, for, um, from Form 5 uh, to IB, uh, and I became a day student. So I was a boarder throughout my form two to form five years. So I did have experience there. Uh, but uh, one of the main reasons I chose it was because of the cost. 
uh, my younger sister had also just joined uh, WK. So uh, my parents are paying both my school fees and my sister's at that particular time. So I uh, discussed it with my parents um, and I became a day uh, student. The disadvantage, uh, sorry, <laughs> English. The disadvantages that I experienced most was the fact um, I didn't have as much social interaction with as many of my peers as those in boarding did. Uh, it didn't affect, I don't think it affected me as much as some of my other day students who were day students previously in Form 5, uh, because I already had a rather big social base. Um, so my border friends uh, would draw me into all of their social interactions. I spent quite a bit of time in boarding. But yeah, I missed out on those, uh, that particular aspect. So I didn't do the group studying thing as much as the boarders did. Um, I don't think that really affected my grades academic wise, uh, but it is, uh, it is a rather important aspect, I think of IB that you do get the sort of the social interaction from your peers. Uh, another disadvantage was during my IB one year, there was a lot um, of extracurricular activities, uh, which is a part of our CAS program. So creative uh, activity and service. There was a lot of activities and creatives that would happen after the buses left at five o'clock, uh, pre-COVID, that I would miss out on. Uh, I did miss that a lot. That was probably one of the biggest disadvantages for me. Uh, Previously being a boarder, I knew uh, what it felt like uh, to participate in those. There were a couple of evenings, I did have a rather long discussion with my parents. So I did get to do some evenings every couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, that one, that was probably the biggest one. Other than that, I don't think I had much of a disadvantage over um, my peers who weren't boarding, yeah. Um, 